Hello everyone, a uh, small video on this undervolt. So we're running nine hours of VAT3. That's a pi prime, uh, test map five finished. Um, Limpac, some runs of Limpac that will be going out soon. So we're on a Ryzen 5 9600X on a B850M from Gigabyte, the cheapest that I could find. It has a PCIe 5 uh, slot. So uh, we're of course undervolted. Um, the most interesting thing about this system is that I was like I've been running with um, 32 as a curve offset on every core and it's been stable through every every test. Um, I'm not showing you the stress test which are not really the ones that you want to test uh, the curve offset with but this machine also passes uh, Geekbench 6 for example or uh, PC Mark which are the ones that I find to be the most reliable to test the of course single core boost and then therefore the curve offset for the single cores because what you usually get is crashes on single core loads when running uh, a very very high uh, undervolt with curve offset so uh, the system is running at 6200 uh, for the memory that's usually my sweet my go-to sweet spot for this kind of cpus uh, but sometimes i even keep it at 6000 uh, with this particular setup, uh, with Ryzen 9000, where the core has a lower power consumption, I could see myself going more with a 6400, but this is the first time that I actually tune uh, the CPU, and it also seems to be a very lucky one. Uh, so I could go with 6400 here, but I also have to deliver the machine to the client, and so this one is not going to get this treatment. Uh, not, 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 not this one. Okay, the next one probably will, if I find it to be that that um, ex effective with the poor offset and that efficient. So we have CL34. This is needed to get a uh, lower VDD and VDDQ, VDD mostly. So the system is rated for 135 as most XMP and CL36000 but I'm running at VDD 132 and VDDQ at 1.21 so these are quite lower voltages and the timings are not super super tight but with 34, 37, 37, 37, 66, TRC 68, TRDS is 8 and TRDL is 15 this is like by XMP uh, I usually don't find many many much of a difference when running a lower TRDL on DDR5 so I didn't bother lowering it. TFAU is uh, 32. Uh, that's also doesn't seem to show that much of an improvement when running DDR5 so I didn't turn it down. Um, what else? TWR66, TRFC. Uh, TRFC2 I tried to lower it and I was getting the same results so I don't know if it's really working. Uh, I don't remember if that's, that's a thing, really, because I tried to run 420 and uh, just for the rules and, I mean, every benchmark was doing the same results. Um, TRTP20, that didn't also show anything of a performance bump. Uh, VSOC and uh, VDDIO are both at 113 and that seems to be the, like, sweet spot for both, so that's interesting. They are very low voltages, so again, that points to a very good uh, sample. Maybe it's because we are late in the uh, Ryzen 9000 uh, run, production run. And the CLDO VDDP is 0 0.8, which is the lowest you can get, and this didn't really show any performance regression. It actually shows, shows a little bit of a improvement uh, on the Limpac score, nothing else. Um, yeah, VDD miss. I uh, didn't find this on the gigabyte bias. I usually, I don't know if, uh, I think this one doesn't really change whatever you set it to on any bias. And then there's two VDDG CCD and VDDG IOD. And this one uh, seems to crash the bias when we try to modify them. 
and I'm pretty sure that on ASRock boards I was able to set them to like similar 0 0.8 something as the CLDO VDDP and um, yeah we'll now get the impact to finish at least two runs this should go 342 or 345 sorry 345, 345 in the end so yeah that's what I expect to, to be uh, oh TRFI uh, refresh is 2277 which is a value that I've seen used very often and uh, yeah that works uh, that's probably uh, that could be higher as I'm running only on the iGPU now but when the system will be paired with the dedicated GPU and run games this is gonna be probably a breaking point so I'm not gonna uh, bother testing for an unrealistic scenario so I'm gonna leave it like that uh, just for the sake of future stability also this is the settings the setup that I did for the VRM cooling on the back because this is a low-end board so the VRM is not that great and I'm running through a recycled stock cooler from uh, 2700X okay so here's some clean pack runs uh, I didn't get my third 345 that I was getting before but I don't have time now to, to go on testing so let's get to the BIOS and see the undervolting so here is the BIOS of course the Infinity Fabric is set to 2067 to kind of synchronize with the 6200 uh, system memory multiplier and yeah it's a 2 to 3 radio kind of works with the memory controller at 3100 as by UCLK equal to MCLK um, here's the voltages this is the VDDP is here up there then we'll get memory some timings that's pretty much what I did and on the MD overclocking position boost curve optimizer here's all my 32 and I could still go on I will probably go on another couple of hours to check whether this actually crashes but the improvements are clear with the results also with the Geekbench for, for some reason single core is improving so yeah I mean it's boosting higher because of this and um, so that's really a win-win as long as it doesn't crash we'll figure out uh, during the testing with the games if that these settings were actually too optimistic but I'll let you know in the comments if, if it's so ups and that's now everything. Ciao!